Hey guys, today we're going to create some beautiful images like these ones using AI. And the best part, it's completely free. It's open source and in this video I'm going to break it down for you guys, make it extremely simple so that anyone can follow along. You don't have to be a developer, some really deep technical person. This is going to be completely accessible and easy for anyone to use. So if you're interested, keep watching. I just spent the last five hours editing this video, the one you guys are watching right now, and I realized some of the screen capture is a bit pixelated. That's because this is the first time I'm capturing the screen on this new ultra wide monitor. Apologies for that, I hope you guys can follow along, I will fix it up in future tutorials. We're going to start by going to this page on GitHub, I will put all the links to these down below so you can just simply click and follow along. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and just have a read of the installation instructions. There are essentially two steps that we need to follow. Step one, we need to install something called Python. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this link and we need this very specific version 3.10.6. There are a ton of different versions, but this is the one that they have tested with and it works. So just make sure that you install the correct version that they are asking for. So we've got Python 3.10.6, and we're going to go with the Windows 64-bit installer, this one down here. On the installation pop-up, I'm going to add Python to path, hit install now. Okay, it's been installed successfully. We will close out of that and go back to our GitHub page. Now that we have Python installed on our computer, what we're going to do is essentially these steps, but I'm going to make it even easier. Instead of installing git another thing and running a command, we're going to simplify it by just simply clicking this code button and going download zip. This is going to save all of these files here to your local PC. So we'll open that up and I'm just going to move this to my documents folder. You can literally drag and drop or alternatively you can right click and go extract all and select where you want to save it to. Once that's done, go to the folder that you just saved all those files to. And we are now up to step four, which is to run this web UI user dot bat script. So if we go back into here, we've got our web UI user batch script. So we're going to just double click that to run it in the background. Now Windows Defender has popped up. I'm just going to hit more info and click on run anyway, because I want it to execute the scripts. Essentially, this is going to run a whole heap of things in the background. It's going to download all of the dependencies and everything automatically for you that is required to run things like PyTorch and a bunch of extra things. As you can see, it's now downloading PyTorch in the background. We will just let that run for a little bit. While that runs in the background, I quickly wanted to mention you are going to need quite a bit of hard drive space for AI to run. A lot of these dependencies and the models, which are how it generates the images, are quite large in size. Some are like two gig, some are five gig. So just keep that in mind that you may need quite a bit of hard drive space for this to work. Okay, looks like it wants us to install Git. So that step two earlier that I skipped over because I wanted to make life simple, it needs it. So we're gonna quickly go ahead and install Git. We will click on this link over here. And we're going to go 64-bit for Windows, very similar to the Python, so we're just going to go next, 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 keep the standard defaults. Uh, yeah, just go next, next, and we will hit finish. So we're going to exit out of this terminal window, and we're going to run that web UI script again, web UI user. That's finally finished, that took about half an hour to run. Now you'll notice it'll say running on local URL. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this URL here and just chuck that into our browser up here. And you'll get this nice uh, user interface that you can start to use. We're going to use this screen to interact with our AI to create the images that we want. We'll get into what each of these fields mean in a little bit, but what we're going to do is just quickly generate a test image. So I'm going to give it a prompt, we're just going to get a close-up of a flower blowing in the wind, and we're also going to give it a negative prompt. This is the opposite of what you want. So in here we're going to chuck things like bad quality, deformed, night, dark, all the things that we don't want in the image. And we're just going to hit generate on the right hand side. 
you'll get a little progress bar and it'll tell you how long roughly it has left. The time will vary depending on the specs of your computer. And there we have it. We have created our very first image using AI, which is pretty cool. Let's try and create something else and I'm going to run through what each of the fields means. So we're going to do CD buildings at night time this time. We're going to set sampling steps up to, let's go 30. The more sampling steps, the higher quality image that you're going to get. Width and height, we are going to keep the same. What I have noticed is when I'm using stable diffusion, you have to use between 512 and say seven or 800 pixels. If you go too little or too high, you start getting deformities in the images that it generates because majority of the things it's been trained on have been within those dimensions. So if you want the best results, you have to stick to those. And then later on, what you can do is you can upscale the images. So it'll just grab the original image, use AI to make it a higher quality version. And that's kind of how you get the best out of that. Batch count. So this is how many times it is going to run the same job again. So we're going to jump that up to two. And batch size is how many images do you want to generate for each job that it creates? Uh, so we're going to bump that up to three. So in theory, what it'll do is it'll create a set of three images. And then because we've got batch count set to two, it's going to run it again. So we should get a total of six images. Your seed is a uniquely identifiable number that the AI generates. Uh, so down the bottom here, we've got our seed number that was created from the flower. The flower picture changed because I accidentally hit space, which created it again. But essentially, if I wanted to create a very similar image, you just copy that seed number. So if you see something nice online that you like, you can copy the prompt, the seed number, and you should get something pretty similar to that picture. By setting it to negative one, it will generate a random seed every time the job runs, which is what we want. And now that we've got those settings, we're just gonna hit generate. And there we have our six images. So we get a grid view, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why it chucked the caption there. Sometimes you get some hilariously funny results, but yes, there we go. We have our city night sky. What you'll find with stable diffusion is the quality of the image that you get is highly dependent of the quality of prompt that you put in. So as you learn and discover more and get better with your prompt writing, you will then get better output of images. Whereas if you're using something like Mid Journey, they do a lot of that fine tuning automatically for you. Like you could just do city, night sky, and it would produce something really amazing. You can't do the same with Stable Diffusion. You have to get really specific with your prompts. All right, so now we have our text to image AI up and running. We know we can get better quality images by improving our prompts, but there is another way. We can change the actual AI model that we're using. So let's go ahead and do that. When it comes to finding great models to use, there are two websites that I like. The first is Hugging Face. Now this is a great website because it has so many different AI models, not only text to images, but you've got like compute vision, natural language processing. So this is creating chatbots. So there's so much you can do with this website. We're going to filter text to image because that's what we're looking at at the moment. Sort by most downloads. And straight away we can see at the moment we're using stable diffusion version 1.5. But there's a later version that is obviously a lot better. Sometimes it'll give you examples of what it can produce in the description. This one doesn't. What I'm going to quickly do is go to the owner's repo. And I'm just looking to make sure that 2.1 is the latest, that they don't have another one after that. 2.1 seems to be the latest. So what we can do is we can go to files and versions. And what we want is this safe tenses file. So I'm going to go ahead, click that one. And if I wanted to use this, I would just simply go download and it would download it to my local PC. Now here's a second website that I like, it's Civit AI. And I really like this one because you get that visual representation of what these AI models can do. So just on the homepage, I'm sorting by highest rating and of all time. Now this is a bit not safe for work. Um, so if you log in with an account, uh, you're able to bypass all those filters. This is YouTube, we're gonna hit this very PG. So I'm just going to go with the very first search result that we have, the deliberate AI. So in here, it gives you a quick showcase of the images it can produce, which is pretty cool. And it's really amazing quality, especially given this is all open source and free to use. And what I really like about this website is you get this cool community gallery. So you can see all the images that other people have been able to create with this AI. And if you really like any of these images, 
What's really handy is you can click into it and on the right hand side, it gives you the exact prompt, negative prompt, and all of the details that people use to generate the images. So if you want to recreate this in your own environment, you can. So we're gonna go ahead and hit download. This will go ahead and download that safe tenses file for us. In this case, we're using that deliberate AI model. Now, obviously, if you wanted a different style, perhaps you wanted like an anime style image, you'd be better off using one of these like counterfeit, pastel mix, minimix. Um, basically, just have a look through the images. Once you find one that you like, you really like that style, go ahead and download the model and muck around with it. Experiment. Okay, that has finished downloading. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that file and we're going to place it within this folder. So we'll go to our stable diffusion folder. Within here, you have a folder called models. And there is another folder called stable diffusion. This is where we are going to put all the models that we download and we want to try out in future. So you can have as many as you want. Now you can muck around with all the different models, but remember when I said earlier that you need a lot of hard drive space? This is what I was referring to. So the original stable diffusion model is four gig in size, deliberate is two gig. So you can see how quite quickly you're gonna fill up your hard drive space if you don't have enough. If you have 10 of these models, you're looking at 20 to 40 gig worth of free space that you're going to need. So just keep that in mind. Now that we've put that file there, what we're going to do is head back to our website, this one here, and we're gonna hit this refresh button here. This will pick up the new models that we have added. So we're gonna select deliberate. This will take a little bit to quickly process it. And we're gonna run that exact same prompt that we did last time with this new model, and we're gonna see the output. And there we have our new images. Now, I feel my prompt kind of just sucks. I wanna create a really nice high quality image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to that Civit AI page. We'll go back to our deliberate model that we downloaded. And I'm gonna take a look through the gallery, find a picture I like, and I'm gonna copy the prompt to see what kind of results we get. Straight off the bat, I think this is a really nice high quality image. So we're gonna click into that. I'm gonna just straight up copy the prompt. Paste that into our prompt there. And I'm gonna grab the negative prompt as well. Put that in there. And I won't, and I won't bother about copying the seed because I wanna just create a unique image. I'm just gonna drop this down to one and one as well and hit generate. Obviously the smaller the count, smaller the batch size, the quicker the job runs. So now this will execute in five seconds and I can just keep talking to you guys like this. And there we go, that's a nice high quality image because the prompt that we were using is a lot better. Now I want something a bit more creative so I'm gonna copy this prompt here. And I've gotta say that's pretty good. I am happy with that image. A cool little feature with this project is you can hit this open folder here and it will open up your outputs folder. So in here, every image that you ever create gets sent here. So if you ever wanna go back and refer to the images that you created from an earlier day, you can. So to recap, we installed our own image generating AI on our machine for free, generated a couple of images, learned how to use different models and to create images that we really enjoy. These last couple of months, I've been blown away by what AI can do. I've been really passionate about learning more, especially when it comes to this text to image generation of art. It's something I'm deeply passionate about and I'm learning more every single day. So if you have any questions about what we just covered or any other direction of AI and AI generated art, please leave a question in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this, also let me know and I'll be sure to cover more topics on AI. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will catch you in the next one.